Okay, who here inspects their kids candy afterwards after they've gone to bed and then magically there's not enough candy in the morning than when they went to bed? Exactly, you're gonna love this part. So let's think about search engine marketing um, and organic together as your child's Halloween candy that you have to inspect. Now, when I think about Halloween candy, I don't look for one thing or the other except for Almond Joys and I will say that anyone that likes Almond Joys just shouldn't be in this room in general. Um, I look for chocolate, I look for sweetness. So I've taken my children's candy here for inspection and I'm lining up and I want you to think this is just the organic listings. I have Kit Kat, I have um, Junior Mints, Reese's, Snickers, Milky Way. Ignoring their holding company brand name, you have basically five different pieces of candy with no discernible indication lead me leaning one towards another. Now, we look at this again. We've added in listings at the top. We've added listings at the bottom. The right side is your product listing ads. The very top ad is a paid ad. When you start looking at this together, where you have both SEM and SEO working together, do you start seeing a lean, something that you might start leaning to, providing you've gone in with no preconception of what you wanted to try? What am I more likely going to lead to when I see these are my options? Sorry, what? Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, the kids never saw a single Reese's Cup this year. But this is the concept. I try to do it as simplified as possible. Um, basically, it's when you have more options, you have more visibility, you have a higher degree of confidence in your determination making going forward, and you are more likely to go get sight to your traffic when SEM and SEO is together. I just ruined the rest of the presentation now. I say that out loud. Okay, we'll keep going. All right, so now you pay attention, right? All right, so I believe we can all relate to this. One of the greatest search marketing geniuses in our lifetime is Khalees. Okay, that was, that, that was the funny one. That was the funny joke. It's true, but it's funny. No one, I, no one liked the Cardi B version I did last week, so we're gonna do the Khalees version. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. Damn right, better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. Now, everyone here thinks she's discussing her physical features and how she can steal your man from you um, going forward. No, that is not the case whatsoever. She is here to expose the logic of holistic search marketing for your brand, and no one here got that. Once again, my HR rep, uh, bless her heart, she did not. This is going to be, oh, it's a live stream. I'm going to get in trouble later. So let's talk about it. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yards. Now, often you think this references a physical body feature, most often her derriere, and saying, you know what, this, this body feature of mine, it drives um, suitors to my yard, to my property, and they come and beg for my love to take me on a No. No, 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 no. This actually is an um, explanation of methodology for a holistic search practice, where it does in fact drive more visitors to your property or to your website but it does this without any incrementality of an ingestional impression. It's not creating demand, it's creating confidence that comes in to bring in through the site. And they're like, it's better than yours. No, this is once again not talking about her physical features exceeding that of her peers or her friends or her cousin. But actually this description of the search consumer's confidence level on a single brand when they see both the brand ad, just remember earlier back to the candy with all the Reese cups, um, when both SEO and SEO are present on a single term and visibly present, you are more likely to have the click through on that brand if both of them are visible at the top from paid and organic. Damn right is better than yours. This isn't really anything new. This is just her getting uh, braggadocious and gloating about her strategy being better than all the, her peers and competitors. And just a reminder that, you know what, it's better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. Kalisa is not referencing the payment from said peer in order to share her tactics of how she attained her physical ability, her physical features. No, 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 no. This is actually the indication that yes, you do have to invest, not just for the manpower hours that go into SEO, but the actual ad dollars that go into SEM. Someone might click on it. The best case scenario, you are present on both paid search and organic search, but someone clicks on the organic search, you don't have to pay for that, which is great. You save on the ad costs. And this is what she's indicating. You're going to have to pony up some cash up front to help try and drive them towards the organic listing simultaneously while still blocking out the competition. I believe we can all here agree that is what she's talking about. Yes? Outstanding. That's the most verbal I've heard anywhere so far. So, yeah, she was right. 
Khalid, SEO by itself provides a concept of one. one you can just call it any number, one, 100, one million, one billion, one seven. SEM by itself, which if you have SEM running and you don't have any organic li listings, you either work in telecom, healthcare, or you are terrible at your job. Um, those are the, pretty much the three scenarios. Um, it also bring, provides one. Remember, neither one is designed to drive more impressions than the other. It's about the traffic. But together, we see an increased opportunity, increasement of traffic, net net, a search incrementality. Having both organic paid, yada, 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 I already said that multiple times, you're increasing your aggregate CTR from a holistic standpoint. I highly recommend always lean on Google Search Console. We'll get into that in a bit. Speaking fast because I looked at the clock wrong, so I actually have a lot more time. It is highly recommended, recommended to test this out on your own, but be sure to preset measurement um, expectations. And there are a few brands that have pulled it off. There's a Harvard Business Review um, study done in 2013, again in 2016 and 2017, saying, you know what, you don't need to do this. Um, once again, though, the only brands that have ever been participated in that study are the only brands that have ever successfully pulled it off in, in the pretty much isolated to Amazon, uh, eBay, and there was one other marketplace. You have to, have, in all three scenarios, the amount of offline media advertising that they had done from TV, print, and display to push down funnel towards that offset it. So yeah, they could go spend a whole, you won't, don't have to pay for paid search, but you're driving so much other awareness-based um, media that it doesn't give you any cost savings. And once again, I really like the office. Creed will do anything to survive in a really dark, dark way. And that's pretty much what we're gonna go through. If you're not willing to pony up and put some skin in the game, you're gonna end up like a crazy homeless man on the site. All right, so the theory of one plus one equals three. Once again, you all please pay attention to this because we're in that little red circle. Very important note, I did not write this theory. I have had nothing to do with this theory other than walk around from city to city and make really bad looking PowerPoint presentations about it. That's it. That and about 20 articles I've written about it, all citing the original authors. Um, no one knows exactly when the theory first came about. Um, I've done as much research as I can. The first documented example of it was done in the print version of DM News, Digital Market News, which no longer exists. They went out of business about a year ago by Melissa Mackey. She is the CEO of another agency, actually, I think here in Chicago. She wrote one of the very first articles on the concept. The very first proven out written data science study was done in 2010 by uh, two NYU PhD candidates, um, Sha Yang and Anand Niagos. Um, I haven't been able to get a hold of Shah, but I have talked to Anand. He's a very pleasant gentleman. He wrote one of the most amazing and fascinating 100-page um, presentations on it. Anyone here that likes math, data science, and understands all the little squiggly lines in a math equation, because I sure as hell don't, I highly recommend it. It will take about three to four hours to fully read, though. And it's worth the time if you, you know, have nothing better to do for three or four hours in your life. Um, but they are the original, these are the two that I can cite as the original finders of this theory. Now, the theory has been around probably longer than that. I've heard um, rumblings of it going back to 2006, um, but I've never been able to find other documentation. So I just have to give them credit where credit is due. So the theory is seemingly illogical, but it's as follows. Assume organic is operating by itself without SEM, which is common. We see that periodically, and it produces 100 visitors. Okay. Now, assume that you have zero organic listings, which means you work in one of those two um, verticals I mentioned earlier, or you're really bad at your job. I guarantee one of those categories applies to at least one person in this room. Uh, one of you is probably bad at your job, one of you probably works in telecom, and one of you probably works in healthcare. I won't ask you to raise your hands for which of the three, but it'll get a little weird. Now, let's pro assume you have no organic listings and you're running just paid search, and it produces 100 visitors. Now, theoretically, when organic, is present and SEM keywords are present and they're both going to be, it should only produce 100 visitors combined because you're not driving any incremental impressions so there shouldn't be any incremental traffic. But what we have seen um, numerous times is you see going up and above the initial 100. So technically, yes, a theory could be one plus one equals 1.01, but that theory in Mathematically, just does not look as sexy on paper. It looks kind of boring, which is why we call it one plus one equals three. It's a higher degree of aggregate click-through rate when both are present. So let's provide some real evidence here. Uh, so you know that I'm not just kind of making it up as I go and then I'm gonna jump, uh, hop out of town, laughing my way. 
So let's talk about bacon. I love it. Speaking as a good Jew that I am, I love the bacon. Um, but we ran the very first study that we ran was completely accident. Um, and it was a smoked meats brand um, who sells 90% of the product sales are bacon. Now they do some ham, et cetera. And they accidentally slipped and fell into our case study. So what essentially what happened was um, this would have been 2020 or early last year. Um, they're selling directly to the website, height of the pandemic. It's a glorious year for online bacon sales because everyone's worried they can't get groceries. So our sales are gone through the roof. Um, someone, I'm not going to say who, the client, um, bought something from a questionable website with their company credit card. That credit card was being used to fund um, the Google Ads campaign. That credit card was immediately stolen, um, racked up a lot, a lot of questionable charges. At least we're calling it stolen, let's put it that way, um, on those questionable charges. So what it transpired then was American Express shut off the credit card. Problem was no one told us. Not the client, because he wasn't aware, not Google, because, you know, screw you, John. Um, and so we were unaware. So we did find out, um, and we went down. So naturally, the first thing you do is you go notify American Express, you get a new credit card number, and you turn the campaign on. But the client's like, nope, we're going to wait until the new credit card shows up. It took um, days, going into weeks, for this new credit card to arrive. So we were essentially down, relying solely on our organic listings for this time period. Like I said, we slipped and fell into this case study. So up until this point, Google was making up about 23, Google Organic and Google Paid Search was making up 23% each of total site visitors. I think combined, they were about 36% of overall site sales. Uh, when I was putting this presentation together, I really thought the screens would be much bigger. Uh, just assume what the numbers I said and the higher ones that you can easily read are accurate below and don't question it. So when the SEM or the paid search for Google turned off, the combined effort um, fell on solely on the shoulders of organic search. So now what's got to happen is organic's got to go sit in there and say, you know what, we're going to offset paid search. We don't need the brand paid ads. We don't need the non-brand paid ads. Organic's got it. So organic, by theory, should have risen from about 23% to a level between 42 and 46% of total site traffic. And the contributions would have uh, risen from, I think they were 20% of the time to 36%. What actually happened, instead of rising that 42 to 46% for visits, it only rose to 36%. Um, you're falling pretty short. You're fall losing about 25% of the aggregate traffic that when both were combined in, in market. Our total number of transactions only reached 29%, going down from 36%. So what does this mean? Organic traffic could not pick up the loss of paid search traffic. Um, one of the things that's most specific is about majority of our traffic was on brand traffic, brand search ads, and they have really good organic brand rankings. Uh, they have very well defined names. So if you're not present, so if you are not able to convert on your very well placed organic rankings on your brand name without paid search, then that tells us there is a little bit of a problem and also helps enlighten you to realize just how important the brand side was of paid search or paid search in general. So when we looked at it, the, upon relaunching the campaign, um, the data returned to a near identical scenario when it, before it went offline, which just made me feel special because I told you so. Uh, once again, the client was not pleased with that and I had to have a conversation with HR again. That's besides the point. No one? No one? It's the same joke over and over. You're just going to have to humor me. I need it for my self-esteem. Um, but yeah, so when we relaunched it, we reevaluated the same duration afterwards. This was a low season for us. This was not a peak shopping. So there was no differentiation in the number of emails that were distributed, no differentiation in peak holiday shopping for us. Uh, our peak season is Q4 and Easter, and we were three months out from Easter. So it was a non-issue for us. Here is what I've said multiple times, but in a fun little graph, because I was told people like visuals and I really don't like making graphs. So there you go. Glad it could be impactful in that part. So let's move on to the next study we did. Automotive accessories. When I say automotive accessories, we're talking about brake pads, we're talking about tires, um, struts, stuff that they keep describing to me that I don't understand because I'm not a car guy. Um, and they had this study of like, all right, 
this was a planned trial. We actually had to do this three separate times because of a variety of weird reasons. And the belief was, we have really good organic rankings. We shouldn't have to pay for our brand terms, which then elicited me in the chicken suit for my response, which has then elicited me in the HR's office again with that conversation to why I can't keep costumes at my desk anymore. So we planned this out. Um, this last, I, this data is only from the last time we ran the test because it was deemed the only one that was not considered um, muddied. Uh, we were unaware that the client had struck multiple deals and had multiple press releases the first time. And the second time, it turns out, was a stimulus check drop. And what we discovered is every time people get a tax refund check or a stimulus check, what do they buy? Tires. Once again, I don't fully understand it, but that muddied our water and our traffic went through the roof, so we had to do this a third time. So the measurement was evaluated on traffic primary with our quotes, um, cost per quote, because um, you can't get the tires or any of the work done without a quote. Um, as our secondary. And now to give you the background, the Google entities um, make up about 70% of visits and 73% of quotes prior to the test. You'll see Google Organic and Google Yext. Yext goes into Google Organic, it's just our Google business listings. Why we have it labeled as Yext, I don't know. And then Google CPC is obviously our paid search. So at this time um, during the test, the number of visits and quotes contributed as a percentage of total were relatively the same as pre-test. The volume during the um, but volume during the test dropped by about eleven percent for visits and about fourteen percent for quotes. Basically saying, all right, you're without brand traffic, you can't make up it with the non-brand. So hope organic's going to work out for you. It did a little bit, but not enough. So when we ended the test, we did another evaluation after two weeks. Now we saw some good, some yeah. The total contribution of the visits and conversions remained the same or near levels. Visits decreased, increased about 6% over the test levels, about half where they were pre-test, but the quotes declined um, versus that of the test levels. Essentially what was that we were saying is we got back to pre-level traffic. We didn't see the same post-click production that was later attributed to a technical issue within the site, but net-net we weren't able to offset the loss of our quotes, but we were able to prove out that we're not going to get as much traffic to the website without the brand um, search ads running simultaneously. So let's go to this one. I was really trying to think of cute headlines here. Just work with me. I, it was late at night. So we're going to go with evidence of this theory, the cleaner that couldn't clean up. This is where y'all go like, ah, oh, good play on words, John. All right, or not. All right, um, after a very unusual ROI analysis, which to this day I still question the validity of, but I've been told I had to stop yelling at the client for that, um, it indicated that paid search was the lowest producing indirect ROI of all media channels. And when I say lowest producing, I don't mean we were profitable and we only produced 101% ROI. I'm saying we produced 36% ROI according to the study, while YouTube on a last click produced 128%. Not saying that the data that was provided to us may have been flawed, but I don't know how to finish that statement otherwise. But anyways, I'm still angry about it, but I've been, I'm getting better at this. So at the time of the analysis, Google search and SEO combined were about 70% of total traffic, 50% going to Google organic, 20% going to Google paid search. Of that 20%, 12 of those 20 points on the Google SEO came from brand traffic. Now the client's like, all right, we recognize the data might be flawed. We don't, we have really good SEO. We're running a lot, or organic, we're running a lot of offline media, TV, print. We don't need to pay for the brand search. It's pointless. It's our most common source of traffic. Why should we be paying for it? And no, no. Um, I was, I was pretty much said this, which is one of the reasons I'm not allowed to talk to that client anymore. Um, the client elects to drop a brand paid search. And we came to an agreement that we'll revisit this every three months. Um, and they have the heavy non-digital media awareness, yada, yada, yada. You all have two eyes that can read this. So I'm not gonna say it out loud for you. So the decision was made and dict when I say the decision made, I mean, it was dictated. I was, to, all my complaining and whining went on deaf ears. And I said, no, nope, it's gonna happen. So we're gonna cease bidding on brand terms, let organic, um, handle the brand queries. Woo! No. So, no, non-brand would remain on, but honestly, non-brand did not make up a lot of our traffic because honestly, who searches for cleaner? We or garbage disposal cleaner? Or her, who even knew that there was a cleaner for washing machines? I sure didn't, and I work on the brand. 
Granted, I should know that based off working on the brand for two years, but that's my problem. So by this logic, Google Organic, it should compensate and offset the um, Google brand SEM, which means it should increase the organic by about 24%. It should go from about 50% to 62% for total visits. The reason why we use KPI for visits, this is a CPG client, it is not D to C. They do 99% of their sales to retailers. So um, we don't have an e-com function on the site. So it's based, it's going gauge solely on awareness. Um, or traffic activity and on-site activity, but visits are the most common entity. So by this theory, this theory has, let's just say, not panned out very well for the brand. By any sort of logic, organic data should increase, if not a little, but then at least by the amount that was surrendered by um, brand and paid search before it went offline. No. No, this actually got to some areas where we had to actually question a few other things that came out. Organic traffic somehow dropped. Um, we went and did some checking. We had no loss in organic uh, rankings whatsoever, specifically on our brand terms. The best working theory we've been able to develop is people have lost confidence because they're not seeing it as prevalent as possible, or they're clicking on a retailer's ad who's also bidding on our brand name because we have that partnership agreement with them. But we were ultimately losing traffic to the site, which preventing us to do our ROI studies. Google SEM without the aid of brand dropped from 20% of traffic to 8% of traffic. Uh, exactly the exact loss that came in on brand. And the organic side could not compensate for it. The logic of operating without brand SEM and organic compensating for it has been deemed as a net loss for the Google entities as a whole between uh, paid and organic. Um, I went to the client and told them so, and they were not pleased by my statement or my delivery. So. All three scenarios, I, or all the evidence is there. I've presented all three scenarios. If someone else here can disprove that theory, come on up and do it. We might throw hands for a little bit, might call each other names. But like I said, there's about three brands that have ever been able to successfully prove uh, that they don't need this. So understand how to measure and test your own. This is also one or two more parts you still gotta pay attention before we get to the stuff where you nod off again. How do you understand the true value of organic and SEM together? And there's honestly, there's a simplistic approach and a more detailed approach. And honestly, they're not all that different except for one line, and we'll get to that in a moment. Let's talk about the simplistic approach. Number one, understand your current production of SEM and organic and tally it up. So literally everybody here use Google Analytics? Or... Literally no one raised their hand. Okay, I'm gonna, all right. So is everybody just, everyone's getting lazy because it's, it's only 4.30, come on. Um, use that to tally up your Google slash organic, Google slash CPC. It's a quick and easy way. Understand the prediction. If you want to go take it a step a bit further, we'll look into the detail one in a minute. Pause the SEM. I do this for about one to three weeks. And I should note multiple times, and I'll say it three more times, I do not condone ever doing this unless it is for a controlled test scenario only to disprove your CMO. Track the organic and SEM production during the pause. Technically, there should be, if you go full bore pausing non brand or full bore non pausing Google SEM, there should be no production from that except for latent old conversion or latent traffic that was uh, pixeled from a week or so ago. Um, then look at the organic. See if the organic can offset the loss of brand or offset the loss of Google paid search. And then note if there's been any changes in the combined production. <coughs> Excuse me. Reactivate SEM, go back to normal operations for the same period that you ran it offline for. Compare the pre, the in, and the post-test data to show um, the difference of the traffic and your ultimately your KPIs, whether it's sales, site visits, um, site consumption, yada, yada, yada. That's the, simple, the simplest way to do it. Now let's talk about the more detailed version. Honestly, the first line is the same as the last one. So is the second line. Kind of surprising, isn't it? Third one here, anybody, everyone here or anyone here use Google Search Console? About half the room. Um, if you do not have Google Search Console, um, I highly recommend doing it. It is free, it is a nice little function. It's the only way to truly get organic search queries, um, <coughs> recognize organic search queries since Google screwed us over in 2011, taking them away out of the GA system. Um, here is where you can get a more intricate test where you can start focusing on specific keywords and search queries, whether it's your brand name or the high volume non-brand one. And you can start doing the test with or without specific terms or entities or products, et cetera, et cetera. It gets a bit more detail, but you can actually compare the loss and the growth of the queries and the clicks 
with on organic within the search console. It does not work for Bing, but it does work for Google. Uh, is everyone here running Bing too? I see three, people, four, five. You should be running Bing. I know everyone laughs at it. It's a little stepchild that no one cares about. It is actually a very high producer, especially if your client base is over 55, lives in the southeastern United States, college educated, or has an average household income of over $100,000. Bing is solid for them, especially for their healthcare and financial services. I don't know why, but old wealthy people in the southeast love Bing. Remember that. Um, reactivate your SEM as normal. Um, back to normal operations, do the pre -po in pre-post evaluation. Um, that little chart there shows a highlight of some pre and post. I really thought the screen was going to be bigger so you guys wouldn't have to squint. You'll get the presentation later. So the takeaway is about where you can start nodding off again if you so desire. Yes, the concept of SEO plus SEM is equal to that of one plus one equals three. Once again, that's a search in incrementality. Uh, the theory of search incrementality, not the theory of incrementality, because you will get a cease and desist letter if you put it in a publication. Very few brands have ever proven to be able to do this. Odds are, if you are in this room, you're not one of those brands because you're not allowed to leave your desk. Uh, so assume the theory is applicable to every one of you here. In recent years, similar to this, a number of brand, large brands have complained um, and at least one lawsuit here, I don't want to call out names, so we're just going to call them 1-800-CONTACTS um, or, I don't know, I hate calling out names, Reddit or Slack, have all complained and sue, tried to sue over competitors bidding on their brand names, showing up, trying to sue, literally a, one act of collusion and bullying and intimidation that was investigated by the FTC. Don't, first of all, don't be one of those brands. Secondly, never contact your competitors because you will get a letter for cease and desist and the word collusion. I did not know what the word collusion meant prior to 2015 until I almost accidentally committed it. Um, your competitors are going to bid on your name if you are worth their, if you're worth time, you're worth weight, you're in that space. Competitors will bid on your name, which is another reason why you need to use paid ads to customize the messaging to bid on your own names literally to defend yourself. I work with a number of QSRs, fast food restaurants, um, insurance, etc. We always have to bid on our own name because our competitors will be there the second we aren't. And they are still there when we are there, but we have a high enough quality score that will uh, supersede them and show higher. Um, it's another reason why you need to be doing it. And while I do not advocate ever for turning off paid search ads and relying solely on organic, I do recommend a test, but a controlled test and not a test that would exceed, not a test during peak season. Not once will I ever say do it during your peak season because that'll get me in trouble. Um, but I do recommend a test during your low season, mid season, nothing more than three weeks off. It's worth the test providing you have the volume. If you don't have the volume, you might have to go to four weeks. Anything over six weeks is just pure lunacy. So, I originally wrote this because I thought I was the very last presenter. That is not the case. Please don't leave. Um, Karen is going to be presenting after me, so we don't want anyone to leave. Um, thank you all for sitting through this. Um, if you love this, hate this, want to see beautiful pictures of my chickens, you can follow me on Twitter. You can email me, and I will send you pictures of my chickens or, or my kids, whichever. Um, and go Jets. Thank you. And now i got a few minutes for Q&A, or you can just yell at me. Right there. Yeah. Test. Oh, hang on, they're going to throw a block at you. There we go. So if we run this test, yeah. and like for the keywords, I know that I bid the, le the least for them from my competitors. If mm -hmm. I run it for three weeks, won't I lose that advantage? You will. Um, so the quality score typically resets at two weeks. Um, if you can run the test for, un for 13 days, that's your ideal number not to lose your quality score and rank histor for historics. Um, it is a little wonky to do just 13 days, and, but it's the only way you can run it without effectively losing your quality score. The question is whether or not you will have subst substantial enough volume to compensate for it, and whether or not other keywords will inadvertently map out to that, especially if you're running DSAs or broad match. Other questions? Okay. I have one question. Oh. <laughs> um, can you provide a, an example between a, an organic content and then paid content? I could provide several, but I do I have the internet on this? No, don't touch it. <laughs> uh, the best example is because one of my client's competitors, go search Chipotle. 
They will show up on paid and they will show up on organic. And with the moment they don't show up on paid, you'll see one of their competitors, direct or indirect, like a Panera, like a Qdoba, like a Jersey Mike's, et cetera. And they'll show up at the top as a paid one when where their paid brand ads show. Gotcha. So the paid is basically, it says add and then organic. It doesn't say add. It's just exactly. organic. Gotcha. Anyone else? No. All right. Thanks, everybody.